is watching our show were really the beginning of the hip hop generation. And I feel like between that music emerging, our show, Spike's movies, there was a change in sensibility happening. From now on, sisterhood is my solace. Maya Angelou, Leontine Price, Marian Anderson, Angela Davis. We must use these women as examples to keep us strong. It was exactly at that time that the term politically correct came into being. Words began to matter in a way that uh, I think the audience recognized and I, I think that uh, made the show powerful. The backdrop of the show was often a topical issue. I think those deeper episodes were our better episodes. They were funnier because there was more at stake. Because of uh, the HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers uh, today. We were at my house having a read through when the news broke about Magic Johnson. This stopped everybody's world. And I knew then, I'm looking at Susan Fails, our head right, I'm going, we have to do something about that. Fails and Allen decided to create an episode of A Different World about a Hillman student, a woman played by Tisha Campbell with HIV. NBC did not see in any way how an AIDS show could be funny. In order to do that, we had to have major stars. That's why we had Tisha Campbell and Whoopi Goldberg in that episode. Tomorrow's assignment is to be speakers at your own funerals. Hey, you mean deliver our own eulogies? So bright, so fast, so black. <laughs> As it turned out, there were plenty of laughs, especially with a subplot about Whitley finally deciding to go all the way. Now, you're not just doing this because you can't afford a birthday present. <laughs> Now, I'm really ready. Really ready. <laughs> it's something I want you to have. It's a very important accessory necessary for the evening. A condom. <laughs> this episode, oh my God, you would have thought we put Jesus back on the cross. No, you can't pick the clothes. Keep it in there. Better that than to find out a couple of weeks from now you got an STD. Why drag the florist into this? <laughs> We couldn't show a condom in a package. We could only point to something in a purse. All of a sudden, advertisers wanted to see the script. That hadn't been done probably since Iris Snow in the 50s was producing the shows. It was a very conservative time in our country, and they almost yanked our license. Bill Cosby stood by us and said, you do the show. Because it deals with mature subject matter, parents may want to view this program with their children. That was the spring of 1992. By the following spring, Josie Webb had died of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, a disease we all know as AIDS. Tisha Campbell treated her in a manner that was respectful and embracing instead of rejecting. That was giving a message that I think needed to be shared. Looking at me, could you tell I was dying? Girl, she lives right down the hall from me. I got to change dorms. <laughs> Gina, to get AIDS, there has to be an exchange of bodily fluids. That's why people get it from transfusions, needles, sex. I I've never had any of the above. <laughs> it was something that meant something to me. Because, you know, in the 90s, we were just starting to get people to understand how serious this was. And the country started paying attention. I don't want to be thinking about dying the first time we make love. Believe me, you won't. <laughs> I'm so ready. You were? The AIDS episode was a stunning stretch for network TV, especially a sitcom. It won several awards and gave a different world leverage in its creative battles with NBC. But the next nerve the series would hit would be with its own cast. It was the only time a script was received with no laughs and absolute silence. And I remember Lou Meyer saying, I don't think we should be doing this. Oh, I wish I were in the land of cotton. Old time there and I've begotten. Look away, look away, look away, Gucci
dishwasher. Why don't you dry my dishes? Oh, he doesn't know any better. You just need to add finished jet dry in the rinse aid compartment. It's there for a reason. It dries much better than detergent alone. Sorry, dishwasher. Finish jet dry for drier, shinier dishes. Liberty Mutual stood with me when I was too busy with the kids to get a repair estimate. Liberty did what? Yeah, with Liberty Mutual, all I needed to do to get an estimate was snap a photo of the damage and voila. Voila. I wish my insurance company had that. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, boys. It's supposed to be three of you. Where's your brother? Where's your brother? Hey, where's Charlie? Charlie? You can leave worry behind when Liberty stands with you. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Who's the genius who puts a girl in heels on a subway grate? Miss Monroe, eat a Snickers. Why? You get a little cranky when you're hungry. Better? Much better. This scene will never make the cut. What does it take to stay close to a dad who's oceans away? A box of crayons? A fleet of paper airplanes? A next door neighbor with a box? and a delivery from overseas that make the distance disappear. Paper and Packaging, How Life Unfolds. Are you currently registered to vote? If not, you can start the process today with one vote. It only takes a few minutes. Log on to news1.com slash category slash vote and register to vote in this important upcoming election. TV One wants you to make your vote count. Montreal and Toronto. I've never been to Canada. No wonder those little shops are going out of business all over. <laughs> well, you know my motto. If the shoe fits, buy it. By 1991, a different world had become a staple of NBC's Thursday night lineup by taking chances and not just about social issues. I heard so often, what's up with those clothes? The Dwayne Wayne glasses, you know what I mean? The flip-up joints. I wanted flip glasses like him. I actually had a pair. The shoulder pads. Massive shoulder pads. I think pad. they're massive shoulder pads. The haircuts he wore were not anything that I would really want to wear. Some of the clothes choices Ron would make, I'd go, what in the world? Beyond fashion, a different world was changing the look and color of higher ed. We tripled the enrollment of historically black colleges and colleges, period. We're taught through our community that being smart is too much like copying the white man, which is the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> but we seem to pass that as some sort of torch on generation after generation after generation. I was a teenager when A Different World was on television. And because of that show, I chose to go to a historically black college and university, Norfolk State University. I sought a university that I thought would give me a different world experience. Among other things, that meant not shying away from aspects of African-American life that were guaranteed to push buttons. <laughs> what is this? Mammy. She's part of my exhibit. From Mammy to Modern Times. Oh, my. She's a part of who we are. She's a part of me? I don't think so. That was a very sensitive show. It was, shh, don't tell anybody, but we treat dark black-skinned people worse than we do light-skinned people. When we did the first table reading for it, it was hugely emotional. And that's when you always knew you had hit the muddler load. When it was that emotional, that's when you knew you had to do it. On Mammy Dearest, the students put on a show to celebrate the legacy of African-American women. Whitley's contribution was her collection of Mammy dolls. We have to embrace our history. You're just doing this to get your mind off your personal life. I'm asking you. That is an ugly untruth. Well, so is this. Cree Summers had to put on blackface. And when she actually put it on, she was like, ooh, I don't like this. And I remember Chanel Brown there being a clash. And Chanel says, but I look like this every day. We were dealing in territories that was very raw. And you don't talk about it. You just don't talk about it. It was really un just unnerving. Rehearsals for the week of the show were tense, especially for the writer of the episode, who happened to be white. 
the day of the filming, I remember sitting outside on a little grass hill and feeling sick to my stomach and knowing, feeling that my career was about to end. I went back to the soundstage and prepared grimly for what the audience response would be. And uh, the first laugh happened right away. I'm not gonna learn anything about myself yes. by looking at this. That's right. Kimmy, in order to neutralize the stereotype, we have to reclaim it. Yeah, yeah, she's right. It's called reappropriating the symbols of our oppressors. Thank you, my sister. Don't push it. We were reclaiming our African identity. We were redraping Mammy as the queen that she should be, not as some caricature to be shunned or shied away from. My son Noah built a new ark, and I turned myself into myself. Debbie had this wonderful concept of doing this beautiful performance piece at the end in which Charnel, the character, goes from being a mammy to being an African queen. It made me proud to be who I was, coming from the, the, the people that uh, had to go through all of that. I mean, I can fly like a bird in the sky. Nancy. Wow, she's sure making a splash in that designer dress. And with a thicker, more fabulous formula. She's not splashing. You can wear anything and pour bleach. And her white or white's just dazzling. Clorox Splashless Bleach. Also try crystals in packs. Give it to me, I'm worth it. I'm Phil Mickelson, pro golfer. My psoriatic arthritis caused joint pain. Just like my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. And I was worried about joint damage. My doctor said joint pain from RA can be a sign of existing joint damage that could only get worse. He prescribed Enbrel to help relieve pain and help stop further damage. Enbrel may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Enbrel if you have an infection like the flu. Joint pain and damage can go side by side. Ask how Embril can help relieve joint pain and help stop joint damage. Embril, the number one rheumatologist prescribed biologic. What's normal? Soy normal? Clearly there's a double standard in beauty. I don't think an industry should define what's normal. Normal hair is the hair that grows out of your head. Big beauty just needs to open its eyes. I just want a product that was made for me. All hair is good hair. We are Shea Moisture. We make 150 different products for every kind of normal. By 1992, a different world had spent five years tackling issues from the Gulf War and apartheid to AIDS and date rape. But for many fans, the biggest issue of all was the on-again, off-again love of Dwayne and Whitley. Hi. Hello. It was a lot of fun because we'd break up, and, and, and there were times, uh, you know, where I would be really angry at the fact that I had to kind of come back around to her. You know, we tried to play a, a real relationship. Whitley had finally decided to tie the knot, but with a different man. Senatorial candidate Byron Douglas III, played by Joe Morton. The wedding episode was a big deal. People kept coming up to me. Are you nervous? I'd be like, well, where am I? Well, uh, no, I'm not nervous. Well, you know, isn't this exciting? Don't you look beautiful? And I would be like, this is not my wedding. It was this incredible collection of wonderful actors all at the same time in the same moment, plus this incredible wedding. Of course, all leading up to the fact that, that Whitley was going to leave me at the altar. Whitley, oh I love you. And if you'll have me, I want you to be my wife. I could hear people in the audience screaming which kind of spurred me on. What the hell are you doing? Hey, I'm sorry, Byron, I love her. And that was almost like hands in my back pushing me 
to go forward. That's where I forgot my lines. Will you have me, Dwayne, as your lawfully wedded husband from this day forth to having a home in richer, for poorer? Baby, please! That was improv. I lost it and went for what I knew, which was baby, please. And people like that. Please! I do! When the moment came and she says I do to Kadeem's character, the audience just went crazy and yelled and screamed and all, especially all the women in the audience. By the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you men and we'll get forward to it. What is going on here? Hi, Ma. <laughs> Dwayne and Whitley's wedding was a showstopper, capping off season five on a high note. But a different world's relationship with NBC was about to be severely tested. For their honeymoon, Whitley and Dwayne were heading to Los Angeles, just in time for the Rodney King verdict of 1992 that triggered six days of rioting. We addressed the Rodney King riots in a sitcom, two-part episode. I came up with this line to let somebody be looting a store and say, free at last, free at last. It's free, it's free, free at last. Free, 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 free. NBC wasn't laughing and refused to approve the episode. Meanwhile, the Cosby Show had ended its run and without that lead in to protect it, Susan Fells and Debbie Allen had little leverage with the network. It was mainly white network executives, and there was one executive who had been nearly attacked during the riots. And we were also casting Sister Soldier, whom they regarded as a racist. And Debbie was saying, well, if we let our friends, Jesse Jackson and others, know that we've been asked to yank this episode, there could be some consequences. <laughs> I think the nail was in our coffin from that moment on. Debbie and Susan won the standoff, and the two-part episode aired in the fall of 1992. But the damage was done. <laughs> Once they're done with you, a network is like, yeah, see ya, don't let the screen door hit ya. You're done, next. Looking back, that is a moment where I feel like it wasn't worth the battle that we waged for it, because we could have had another season or two. I remember standing in the parking lot with Joanne Curley Kerner, and Daryl Bell zoomed into the parking lot in a Lamborghini, and Kadeem zoomed into the parking lot in a Maserati, and they owned the world. Joanne turned and looked at me, and she said, no one has any idea that this won't last forever. You know, I'm scared of everything, and this Halloween stuff just give me the creeps. You don't like Halloween. This Friday, in one refill, pluggable Febreze and fabric refresher, two more ways to breathe happy. TV One celebrates HBCUs with an all-day marathon of a different world, back-to-back, -back, all day long. Work with me, paper! Don't miss a different world marathon. Win! Starting next on TV One. Mr. Gaines is the face of Hillman. He was so talented as an actor. He did lots of August Wilson plays. His take on things always kept everyone off guard, you know, especially the kids. They loved him. He was a dear friend of mine, um, off camera and on. He's going to be missed. He lives in our hearts. Mr. Gaines was the man. At Hunt's? And what you see is Sink Subaru, your longest running dealer in Metro Atlanta area. How you doing, beautiful? Hi. <laughs> I'm okay now. Feeling good. Yes. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Y'all, finally somebody got us together. Today, the cast of A Different World has reason to look back and smile. This is the best it's ever been going to Today. be in your entire mm -hmm. career. Mm -hmm. Remember I used to say that? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. This is the best it's ever yeah. going to be because it leaped forward. Mm -hmm. It said to hell with the rest of the world, mm -hmm. hell with anybody else. Mm -hmm. This was a monumental leap forward. In its heyday from 1987 to 1993, A Different World was that rarest of shows, a hit sitcom that took on serious issues but still managed to make you laugh.
I'm trying to help you, Mr. Gay. If you don't want Josie to serve you, then take your germs and your intelligence deficiency yeah. syndrome out of the pit. There's nothing like a different world on television right now. And we miss that. Something that can really capture the voice of young America, young thinking America. But after a controversial episode about the LA riots and a slip in the season six ratings, NBC started juggling a different world's time slot. First they moved us to eight o'clock and then we were against Martin Lawrence's show and I resented that because there were, you know, what, three black shows on. So why put us on at the same time? Why split our audience like that? What, what do you get from that? When they start moving your time slot, that means we don't know what's happening over there, but we're not gonna stand for it much longer. The end came on May 8th, 1993, with almost zero promotion or love. It was <sighs> different worlds going off this weekend. And thank you very much. That was it. You know, it was unceremonious. There was no fanfare. Remember, remember when we were treated good. <laughs> Remember when. Remember, remember when. when. Remember See, that spoiled when. us. Yes, we thought every time we worked, we were going to be a family. Yep. Though the series came to an end, the cast of A Different World never slowed down, in large part thanks to showrunner Debbie Allen. When she got there, there was nothing you couldn't try. And she was never afraid to say, no, that ain't gonna work. Right? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. You got to write the show. You got to direct yeah. the show. Yeah. I got to direct the show. Yeah. That <laughs> don't, don't happen. happen. Yeah. Yeah. I started writing, I started producing, I started directing, I started going behind the scenes. I've been on several series, The Wire, House of Lies on Showtime. I directed the Wayne and Brothers show and Robert Townsend's show, Parenthood. I've been very busy. I was in the movie Monsters University, the sequel to Monsters, Inc. I also do voices for about a dozen different animated shows and animated films. As for the show itself, a different world still lives in syndication, influencing the Whitleys, Dwayne's, Ron's, and Freddy's of tomorrow. Grandmothers come up to me and say, my grandson wanted to be an engineer because of Dwayne Wayne. To have people say, I became a doctor because of you. Creek gets it too, a lawyer. I became a lawyer because of you. It's very humbling, and it's a blessing to be a part of that. Really a blessing to be a part of that. Even as we sit here now, when you hear people talk about uh, when we work together, it's a family and so forth, you can't fake this kind of chemistry. You can't yeah. fake this kind of, of spirit that comes together when we are all gathered like this. I haven't had a work experience that made me so proud. Mm -hmm. And I look back with such fondness, and I miss you guys. And I just learned so much. I'm going to get emotional, but I love <laughs> It continued the work of Cosby to bring an enormous mosaic of black people into America's living rooms. It helped young black minds think it was cool to become educated. I remembered somebody asking me how they can apply the helmet. Mm -hmm. It was like, there is no helmet, boo. There's a Hampton. We'll look back at it and say, you know what, this is something that I can relate to. Because it's about, ultimately, it's about the human experience. Our show is still changing young people's lives still increasing enrollment in historically black colleges. And those stories that we told are still relevant right now. Thank you for everything. Oh, I feel some turbulence coming on. <laughs>